Hey, it's Aaron from AaronOnAutos.com. Today we're going to do our shaky cam interior walkthrough in a 2021 Kia K5. For those who aren't aware, the K5 takes over for the Optima. So if this car looks a lot like an Optima, uh, it's because it is an Optima. They just replaced the name with K5, made a couple upgrades. There you go. So let's just get started. Walk through this interior. I'll show you what's up. Beautiful red seating. Hopefully you can see that. This is the GT line model. Uh, I'll show you Monroney later on. All right. So starting out, looking over here on the door, you see you got your uh, windows, or yeah, windows here, mirrors here, window lock is right here. Uh, mirrors adjust the way you would expect. Door locks are right there. Up here is the door handle. You can see the door lock is no longer here because they moved it down there. Uh, so here's the door handle. And then you can see the first of the vents here. Now these, uh, you slide them this way to turn them off. You slide them this way to turn them on. Off, on, off, on, got it. And then uh, just up and down, of course. And then you've got your uh, dimmers, lane keeping, and traction control. Down here, this opens the trunk. And down there, you can just see it, that opens the hood. This is actually where the fuses are. So you pull this, pull this out, and there's the fuses. I have a bad habit of not pointing the camera at what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, anyway. <laughs> Uh, steering wheel so looking at the steering wheel you can see over here on this side this is mostly in entertainment and driver controls uh, so you got voice control up here this changes your mode on the radio this is pick up and hang up on the phone right for telematics it's not really telematics but i like to use that word and then over here is volume control for the radio this changes tracks and or stations depending on what you're doing on said radio over here you've got uh, this is driver information screens, so this goes through the menu systems. I'll show you some of those when we get there. This goes up and down through the sub-menus. Cruise control here turns it on and off. Uh, this is like pause and move, right? So this, or pause and move. So this is your, <laughs> this is your cruise control. It's because they put that right there. It makes no sense. Why do you have a pause thing on the cruise control? Anyway. So uh, you set the cruise up or down, right? And then you can increase or decrease. And then either one of those, if you push it in, you're either, I guess, pausing the cruise. I don't know. Maybe it does. I haven't actually tried that. I just now noticed that that's there. Uh, but it also resumes. This is your distance for the adaptive cruise there. This is your steering controls. This is kind of a Kia thing. Uh, you can stiffen and loosen the steering separate from your drive mode, which is pretty cool. And then up here is your, like I said, driver information menus. That's it for the steering wheel. Over here, you got some dongles. This is the washer wipers up and down, back and forth, right? So you pull it towards you to uh, squirt. You go up and down for uh, to turn it on and off. You can see the modes there. And then this is the speed setting. Over here, you got signal turned because that's the order you should be using them in. And you can see you got lighting here up and down for those signal turns. And then fog lamps are right there like that. Uh, this switch is on either side. Ditto on this one. Uh, so you can control it from back here or up here or both. Just, you know, FYI. All right. Now, looking at the instrument cluster. You can see over there on the left, got you a tachometer. Over here on the right, you got a speedometer. Right in the middle of that one, you got a Canuck miles per hour. Over here, you got engine heat, or specifically water heat. Over here, you have fuel. Uh, so that shows you where your fuel is, and then you can see you fill on the left. Uh, I haven't put a whole ton of miles on this car this week. I just didn't have a lot of time. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful driving car. Feels really good. And fuel economy was surprisingly good as well. Uh, so then he, over here, you can see this tells you your gearing. This is your estimated miles for of range with the amount of fuel you have. Down here is the outside temperature. You can see it's still a bit chilly today. Over here is the odometer. Now, in the middle, looking at the menus. There's the one I've been using the most. That's your uh, digital readout, right? It's going to keep doing that because I'm not driving the car. There we go. So... Uh, I'm idling, idling, evil, evil, idle. For whatever reason, this is not straight. Anyway. 
Uh, here's my fuel economy, and that's a pretty good average, actually. Uh, I've been doing... Uh, this has mostly been driving around town. I only took this on the highway to do my formal uh, highway miles per gallon test, which came out better than sticker, so nice, nice job there. Uh, here is a compass. Here's a... You know, so you can kind of see what's going on, and then some of these you can go up and down. So on that menu, I'm now going up and down. You can see tire pressure and other vehicle info, right? Mostly tire pressure. And then over here, you can go through. So you can see on this entire trip, that's the fuel economy. That's not my trip. I didn't do that driving. Uh, but there's the uh, amount of time and all of that involved in it. This is for today, so all I've done this morning is got in the car, hauled the kids to school, came back home, parked right here, and started talking to you. So there's today's trip. You can see around town I was getting almost 21. That's not bad. And that's in this drive mode. I did not change the drive mode on this drive today. So there you go. That's, that's pretty dang impressive. Really good fuel economy in this car. I am, I am amazed. So, uh... This particular model has a few upgrades, the GT line does. I'll show you the Monroe real quick and I'll add on my uh, fuel economy test numbers for that, uh, just a, a, for the highway anyway, and just a really, really nice drive in this car. It's not sporty, like, you know, it's not a sports car, but it feels sporty. It just drives well. All right, back to it. Over here is infotainment. I'm trying to remember how you get to the home screen on this thing. And I don't. This is more or less the home screen. This is what you get when you're not doing anything. Uh, but you can see, you can go to like the map right here. Uh, you can go to nav, radio, media, etc. Uh, media is mostly going to be like streaming off your phone or a device, whatever you've got. And then seek and track if you want to use those. Setup is the setup for most things. So if you're in, say, radio and then you want to change the radio settings, you can do it there or use the, there's often a button on here. And then this is volume and uh, mute, so you push it like that to get what I, you see there, and then you can change the volume like that. Uh, star is to favorite whatever you want, so I've been starring all kinds of like Aussie songs and stuff this week. <laughs> <laughs> here you got your Duke's lights, more of those vents, push button start right there. Down here you have some climate controls. I have everything turned off, but normally you would have auto on like this. And then you can see, you can set the temperature, you can sync the two sides or not. You turn it off right there, defrost, etc. Pretty straightforward on that. Down here, you got like a spot to drop a phone maybe, uh, if you want to, or some keys or some extra junk. Over here, you got a 12 volt USB, another USB. Difference between these is this is power only. That's why it has a little power sign. This is, says USB because this one will connect. So if you have like Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, whatever, that's where you can plug it in. Here's the shifter. Uh, shifter is pretty straightforward. Push the button, move it back and forth. And down here you got your brakes. Pull it to set it, push to release. Auto hold for hill hold. You could also try to use it for, for uh, launch, I guess as a launch control button doesn't really work very well though just saying over here is the uh, drink holder pretty simple but it works really well so there you go uh, i will say this is hard plastic these are uh, so if you do have something that rattles a little bit it will make noise in there that's a note for you that drink say red bulls stuff like that that's in small containers over here you got some drive mode controls and whatnots so you can see this is the bun warmers One's over here. You push this button for the steering wheel. This changes drive mode. You, you basically have three. You got eco mode. I think you have four actually. You got eco mode, normal, sport, custom, and snow. Custom, you can just set it. And then when you change it, it changes the screen up there to kind of give you a general indicator of what you're doing. Right? So here's snow mode, which I actually used when I first got this car because it was snowing. Here you got a key charger, Q charger, Qui charger, however you say that word. Uh, it's really really convenient so you can see you drop your you push your phone down through that and then this wirelessly charges Really really awesome and this kind of thing prevents you from dropping random things like car keys or something that are gonna burn up in there. So that's pretty dang awesome over here. You got a little bit of storage not a whole lot and Then you got this red seating that's covered in my crap with the little black stripes nice beautiful seats 
wonderful interior. The red really sets it off. Uh, this is a great slate gray kind of a color on this car too. And then you can just see the lines. They're, they're simple, uh, but well done. Just looking really good. You got this faux carbon fiber kind of stuff and whatever. And then over in the back, you can see the back seats. You see what that red looks like. Beautiful. I really like it. Uh, trunk is a good size. Show you a picture. So even though it's a clipped trunk, it's a good looking trunk. Good sized. You know what I'm saying, right? I feel like I'm in a hurry and I'm not sure why, but I'm hurrying for whatever reason. How long have we been going? 10 minutes. Wow. This might be a short one. So, uh, there you go. That is the really nicely done 2021 Kia K5, which replaces the Optima. And this is in the GT line package. That's about all I got. This has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon. Subscribe.